And welcome back to a sun-splashed Dwight T. Reed Stadium on homecoming. The kickoff from right to left is out of the back of the end zone. The Blue Tigers will get the ball first to start things out as we welcome the offense led out by sophomore quarterback Zamar Brake, the six foot four, 225 pound returner from last year. He'll be joined by Omar Allen in the backfield as well as Samuel Ingley at tight end. And wide receiver for the Blue Tigers, Christian Robinson, Charles Johnson, and Adarius Ely. Across the front five, from left to right at left tackle, Flores, Carter at left guard, Medellin at center, Severia at right guard, and Dagren at right tackle. Empty set backfield, no Zamar break actually. This is Nathan Valencia, the second string quarterback. Taking the first rush to the right side of the line and maybe just a yard and a half forward on the first play from scrimmage. Oh, he had a special game day ball presentation. A skydiver brought in the game ball just about three or four minutes ago. Not a cloud in the sky here in mid-Missouri. Second down and eight out of the shotgun. Valencia hands off. A little scrimmage around the left side to Dewan Lomax, the freshman from Boonville. Carry is good for about three or four yards to make it third down and three. Lincoln has struggled on third down this season. Shelter insurance, third down. Can the Blue Tigers convert, come up with some magic here with the receivers split out two by two. Ball in the left hash. Three man front with three in the box for Central Oklahoma, they're two and two on the season. Lincoln winless, still looking for their first win in two years in the MIAA. Valencia, three step drop, here comes the pressure, flips it out to Lomax and he drops the forward pass just by inches. It was more side to side action and now fourth down and three will bring out the punting unit here for Lincoln. With Michael Cunningham, the freshman. He stands back at the 15-yard line. And at the 35, for Central Oklahoma, it's JV on Dangerfield and Kevion Williams. He'll be kicking into the wind. And the play clock winding down. The kick is up, end over end. And fielded at the 35, now gets a block at the 40, changes on east-west direction and spun out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Jason Dangerfield with the return. As Dangerfield was spun out of bounds by Jamarian first Smith. So first and 10 here for UCO. Let out by their standout quarterback, Stephen Brown. Six foot five, 220 pound junior. He'll be joined by Nasir Kemper, in the backfield at running back and the fullback, Andrew Carney. Jacob Delso is at wide receiver, lined up in the X spot, then Johnny Bizzle to fourth at wide receiver and Dante McGee at tight end. I formation and Nasir Kemper takes the first carry for the Broncos, good for a gain of four, three yards shy of the LU, rather three yards shy of midfield. Hey, Dennis James.
Peyton Scott on the carry. First and 10 from the 35 yard line. The Dante McGee. First and ten from the fourteen yard line. Kevion Williams on the carry.
13 here at the first quarter. And right now, Lincoln is driving. They started deep of their own territory, and that brings them up down to now the UCO 47-yard line. Valencia takes the snap handoff to Lomax. He's upended at the 41-yard line of Central Oklahoma, and it will make it second down and about six to go. Thanks for sticking with us here on KJLU 88.9 FM, Jefferson City. On a sun-splashed homecoming from Dwight T. Reed Stadium. Out of the shotgun set, three receivers split out to the right side, one to the left, Lomax in motion, Valencia, three-step drop, eyes downfield, zips it, and it's complete down to the 25-yard line, and a fall forward for the first down as it's hauled in by Damian Bell, the freshman for Lincoln, and they're two yards shy of entering the UCO red zone. So first down in 10, the Blue Tigers move the chains. And Central Oklahoma making the trip here to Jeff City. They're back to the end zone on a three-man front. Lomax takes the handoff around the left, trying to cut off field, and he is spun down maybe after a gain of one. Centers up between the hashes. No gain on the play. They'll work out of the shotgun once again. A personnel change for LU as they bring in Tavian Miller lining up on the left side slot. Ely and Bell are lined up on the right side out of the shotgun getting all the play signals here from the LU near sideline. UCO in the road gold pants. Blue sweaters and once again it's caught on the flat this time inside the red zone. A little shimmy move there by Miller as he got around a defender to bring up third down and maybe four. Third down and four, 6.50 to go, first quarter. Seven to nothing, Central Oklahoma on top. Lincoln got the ball first. They drove about 15 yards in their own territory before the drive sputtered and tied. Ingley in the set. Lomax trying to cut the corner on the right side, and he's pile-driven backwards, leading the charge for UCO. Was Michael Slater, the defensive end, at six foot two, 290 pounds, and Lomax, the freshman, might be feeling everything of that hit tomorrow. Now they're going to try the field goal here. They mark him down at the 21. Clayton Winkler is back to hold at the 23. So we'll call this a 33-yarder for Javier Moreno. They do have the ball center right up between the hashes. The snap is back. Here's the kick. Has the distance driving forward, and it's good. So Moreno drills a 33-yard field goal with 5.49 to go in the first quarter. Gets Lincoln on the board, and they trail 7-3 here in the first. We're going to step aside for 30 seconds here on KJOU 88.9 FM and on the MIAA network. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you on the other side. To Dwight T. Reed Stadium, the Blue Tigers cover about 50 yards on the drive, and it results in a 33-yard field goal off the right leg of Javier Moreno. He now has back-to-back -back games making a field goal. The Blue Tigers lost last week at Northeastern State, 38-10. Right now they're riding the hot hand of the backup quarterback, Nathan Valencia, so no Zamar break yet. And we'll see if he comes back out, but right now Lincoln trailing by four, halfway through the first quarter. More than halfway, 549. And ready to drill this one is Michael Cunningham from the 35-yard line. Back to receive for UCO. Nikki Cavedo and Francisco, rather, Jacob Delso and Kobe Stevens. This one fielded by Stevens at the 5, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. Now Stutter steps at the 30, 35, and trying to find the edge is pushed out of bounds. Kobe on the carry. By the Blue Tigers, Joel Talley Jr. making his way across the sideline. And back out will come Central Oklahoma.
once again out of the I formation. And a turn and give to the fullback, Andrew Carney. So far right now, Valencia four for five for Lincoln through the air for 53 yards. Longest pass was for 22. Brown on the first drive was one for two for 21 yards. He connected with McGee. But so far, Carney has gotten a majority of the carries. That was his fifth carry of the day already. Play action. Brown airing it out down the field as a wide open receiver at the 20-yard line, and he hauls it in. Falls forward down to the 15, and UCO is back into the red zone. On that monster of a catch. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. And now it's first and 10 on the 15. Hand off with a cut around the left side for Carney. Stopped just maybe a yard deep past the line of scrimmage to make it second down and nine. No game. We'll call it no game. It's like that was Dante McGee on that 45 yard. Rather, McGee had the first reception. That was Dominic Dunn on the reception for 45 yards to set up this trip into the red zone here for Central Oklahoma. Let's catch you up here on the first drive. Lincoln stuttered and stalled as they received the kickoff. nothing but the best from their cadets. Leadership excellence is what every cadet strives to achieve. That resulted in a punt, three plays for seven yards. UCO took over. Nine plays, 57 yards, and three minutes and 27 seconds. Finished off on a touchdown to go up 7 nothing. Then Lincoln on the ensuing kick took it from the 25-yard line, went nine plays, 59 yards, and resulted in Javier Moreno's second field goal make of the season as he has back-to-back -back field goals dropped through. So we'll see if the Blue Tigers can hang in here with Central Oklahoma on homecoming. I hope you're having a blessed homecoming, to say the least. And we appreciate your patience as we work through some technical difficulties early on as this game got underway. But for right now, it's 7-3, 4.15 to go in the first quarter. From right to left across your radio dial drives UCO, man in motion. The tight end, rather the running back, Kemper, as he gets it at the 15, drives to the 10, and out of bounds just in front of maybe the 10-yard line. They'll spot him at the 9, and now it is third down. Third down, four to go, ball on the nine-yard line. So far, Central Oklahoma two for two on the afternoon from third down. A work out of the shotgun, extra tight end wing to the left side. In motion from left to right, it's Carney. Carney joining the right wing. Well, pass it, slings it out high in the end zone. Oh, what a tackle to keep. Two feet out of bounds for the intended target. Incomplete pass there in the secondary. That's one of the best tackles I think we've seen all season. It was Marky Mallory. And Central Oklahoma will have to kick as the hold will take place at the 15-yard line out of the hands of Bo Phelps, the sophomore. Cavedo signing, lining this one up. The call from 25 yards, the kick is up, and it is right down Main Street to separate the score once again by seven points. 3.30 to go here at Dwight T. Reed Stadium in the first quarter. It's homecoming, and UCO leads 10-3, but the Blue Tigers are coming up next when they receive the kickoff. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Lincoln Blue Tiger football. Three minutes and 30 seconds remain here in quarter number one. 
Central Oklahoma just knocked through a 25-yard field goal off the right leg of Nikki Cavedo. Cavedo's back on the right side of the field to kick it away from right to left as the Blue Tigers will take back over. Their last play, nine, or rather last drive, was nine plays for 57 yards and a field goal. But Cavedo got a good leg into it, fielded at the one-yard line. They're going to bring it out to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, and spun out of bounds at about the 26, 27. Ely with the carry. Ely on the return to bring out, well, will it be Nathan Valencia or Zamar Brake? Break was listed as number one in the depth chart, but Jermaine Kiel's the head coach of the Blue Tigers in his first season, trying to keep UCO on its toes. And this indeed will be Valencia, and why not? He's four for five on the day for 53 yards. Still continuing with the second string all position players, although this time it's not Lomax, but rather it's Omar Allen, and he is unable to find anything. Man, oh man, the Broncos got a really good read off to the left side of the line, and they're all there to hem in Omar Allen and keep him from gaining anything. Lomax has five carries for 11 yards. Longest rush has been for five. That brings up second down and 12, the longest distance for Lincoln today on any set. Ball in the right hash, shotgun set. And Valencia checks it down. To Ingley, the tight end, as he makes the catch and falls forward around the 30, 31 yard line. And rather, he was short of the 30. They spot him at the 28. And now it's third down. Lincoln today is one for three on third down. Brings up a shelter insurance, third down. So, third down and seven to go. Two minutes and 28 seconds left here in the first quarter. Lincoln trailing 10 to three. They'll pitch it out to Allen, changes direction. Trying to fight for the first down yardage. He's going to be shy by about two. Omar Allen on the play. I really like the ability of Valencia to shovel pass. He's kind of channeling his inner Patrick Mahomes right now. He's aired it out a couple times. His longest completion for 22 yards. As he found Bell on the first, rather second drive of the game for Lincoln. But we've seen him option with the shovel pass a couple times. And... Didn't work as they go three and out, but see if the defense can stand up tall again. UCO on the game, two possessions and two scores. They get the snap off, and there were 12 men on the field. No, a timeout called by UCO before 12 men were on the field. Tavius McDonald was tardy getting off the line. Getting onto the sideline, and that's going to result in UCO having to burn a timeout. Now, so far, Central Oklahoma, they're 2-2 two two on the year. They've lost to Missouri Western and Missouri Southern. They were shut out in their opener against Mo West, 35-0. That was up in St. Joe. Then they went to, rather, they came back home, played Emporia State. They won 21-13. They lost at Missouri Southern 40-21 to back on September 17th. And last week against Northwest Missouri State, they played a coast game with the Bearcats. You should say it's a close game. They got the upset, 23-14 over Northwest. Shows that the Bearcats are human as this snap is... Back to Cunningham, a little high, and got his leg into it, though, and takes a few Lincoln bounces. It's going to continue to roll, keep rolling, as it goes down to the 25-yard line, and that's where Ely downs it. It'll be first down and 10 for Central Oklahoma. Trips receivers out to the left side for UCOs. They take over on the 25-yard line. Brown slings it out, almost picked off. As is intended, target Jacob Delso. 
They were trying to get him on the screen, but Lincoln had better coverage. Knocking that one away for the Blue Tigers was Kelvin Durham. Works once again out of the shotgun. Two receivers split out left and right sides. Play action. Brown over the middle and incomplete. Once again was trying to find Delso. Again intended for Jacob Delso and again incomplete. And now it's third down and ten, but UCO has converted better on third down today than Lincoln. They're two for three. They're winning the time of possession battle right now. Seven minutes and 47 seconds in comparison to the 546 for Lincoln. But now Brown spreads everyone out. Empty set backfield, takes the snap, drops back a couple steps, fires over the middle. It's caught at the Blue Tiger logo into the 50, to the 45, and down to the 42-yard line. First down, UCO on a big reception hauled in by the wide receiver, Madison Ridgeway. And Ridgeway took a shot as he hauled that one Ridgeway in, and now it's first and ten. Lincoln 43, and they're trying to get a couple more plays off. 51 seconds remaining in the quarter. Lincoln trailing 10 to 3 on homecoming. And they did give the carry off. They're out of the handoff to Carney. Not much going for him. Cottrell was the leading rusher last week for UCO. He only has one carry for five yards. And DeAndre Skinner levels a big hit against Cottrell as he gets the first down inside the 35. Cottrell on the carry. Down to the LU 32. Eight seconds to go in the first, first quarter. Game. Brown trying to get his men up to the line, but I don't believe they're going to get the next playoff as the clock hits zero, and the Blue Tigers hanging in there against Central Oklahoma on homecoming. They trail 10-3. to We'll step aside for 60 seconds. This is Lincoln Blue Tiger football on KGLU, 88.9 FM Jefferson City, and the MIAA now. As he welcome you back to Jefferson City, Missouri. James Stanley on the call. Our producer is Jared Stein back on the MIAA network. Dan Turner running the ones and twos back at KJLU. Good crowd on hand for homecoming. There's a lot of tailgating going on as well all around Dwight T. Reed Stadium. And welcome you back to Jefferson City. We're glad to have you. First and 10, 15 minutes on the clock to start the second quarter. Brown. Brings Carney into the sidecar, and he's going to keep it for himself. First down plus two, and he's down to the 21-yard line to move the sticks for Central Oklahoma. That's their eighth first down already in the game. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. So far, up over 150 yards of offense, 51 on the ground, 104 through the air. Just in the first quarter alone here for the Broncos. Extra tight end wing to the left side. Hand off the turning give to Carney, trying to follow the blockers. Oh, he's brought down at the 19-yard line, and there's a penalty flag that comes out. I believe rightfully so. He was spun around by Jalen Mosley, the linebacker, and he might have gotten him on a horse collar. Although UCO is backing up, so this could go against the Broncos for holding, and it appears that is what the call will be. That's the first penalty today on either side. First and 10 turns into first and 20 from the Lincoln 31. Here in the second quarter, the Blue Tigers will defend the Broncos as they go from left to right. Four-man front, two in the box here for LU. That's DeAndre Skinner and Mosley. With all their veteran experience trying to get everyone lined up properly. It's a screen pass out to the left side to Carney at the 30-yard line, turns on the Jets and gets all the yardage back from the penalty to make it second down and 10. One yard shy of the red zone. 
And rather, that was Kemper on the reception. They continue with Kemper in the sidecar. Ball on the left hash. Trips receivers out to the right side. Four-man front for Lincoln. Here comes the rush. And it's holding as Brown has plenty of time. Around the left side gets a block following the edge and out of bounds inside the red zone this time. He's up to the 15-yard line to set up third down. And we'll call it three to move the chains. Lincoln has stopped UCO just one time on third down. It was in the red zone. And it resulted in a 35, rather a 30-yard field goal for Nikki Cavedo. Third down, four to go. Ball that extended the, the lead 10-3 for UCO, and that's where the score sits right now. Two minutes eclipsed into the second. Two receivers set, split out. It's an option play. Oh, there goes Kemper. Kemper through traffic. Drives his way to the house. Touchdown, UCO. With 13-11 to go, he barreled over two defenders and takes it in for six. It's now 16-3, pending the PAT. Out for the extra kick, rather the extra point. It's Nicky Cavedo, already with four points to his name on the day, looking for five. The snap is back here, the hold, and the kick is right down Madison Cavedo's extra point is to make it 17-3, UCO with 13-11 to play until halftime. We'll keep it here during the break and keep you up to date with some of Lincoln's numbers on offense so far, Valencia has looked good through the air. Six of seven, 63 yards passing. He's connected twice with Bell for 42 yards. This will be his first time going from right to left on the field today, so he will have the sun in his eyes to deal with and the wind at his back, but it is an absolutely gorgeous day here in Jefferson City, Missouri. They had the homecoming parade this morning down Lafayette. For as little as $100, you too can make an impact on this. Currently 76. It was in the 50s this morning. It's about as hot as it's going to get today. Located at the north entrance of Dwight P. Reed Stadium. Or visit www.lublutigers.com. Absolutely no clouds in the sky. This is a perfect way to start October. We'll see what Jermaine Gales has dialed up here. He's kind of gone the opposite direction. Direction of the grain of the wood. He's brought in a lot of the second teamers. This time out on kickoff return, he'll work with Ely as well as Tavian Miller, who wasn't even listed on the depth chart on kick returns or at wide receiver. And he has a couple receptions and a couple runs today. That's all you can do when you're trying to rebuild a program. Just find the little things and Trying to capitalize, but Miller almost collided with Ingley. Miller called for the fair catch. Ingley says, I was ready to run. The tight end getting a rare look at having a chance to not just take an onside kick, but an actual honest-to-God return. And they took the opportunity away from him. And, oh, my, they're going to place the ball back where he fair caught it. See, Miller called for the fair catch at the 14-yard line, and I believe since he was not inside the 10, that ball gets placed at the spot. And if he's inside the 10 with the kickoff rules that were implemented a couple of years ago, they'd mark him up at the 25. So we just talked about how Miller is not listed on the depth chart. Well, he didn't prepare, look to be prepared at that time, but it will be a long field for Valencia and company. And they'll continue to work with Omar Allen in the backfield. Eagerly offset wing to the right side. Two receivers out to the right. The Margie Musical Storm rushers us in the first drive for Omar Allen as he could not walk the high wire on the near side. He does get Lincoln up to their own 22-yard line to set up second down in, we'll call it, one and a half with 13.06 to play in the half. The Blue Tigers trailing 17-3 on homecoming to UCO. Central Oklahoma off the big upset last week against Northwest Missouri. They won 23-14. Lincoln trying to find an upset of their own. They're 0-4 to start the year. Handoff, Allen, no quarterback keeper. Valencia, oh, took a big hit, leveled down. 
by Jason Harris. Valencia on the carry. No gain on the and there's no gain, and now it's third down and one. Blue yeah, Tigers have not converted on a third, third down in about 10 minutes of game play. They're one for four. I imagine UCO is going to stack the box here. They're making all sorts of changes from the left defensive end to the right defensive end, and they're bringing a couple linebackers in as well. Empty set backfield for Valencia. Going to try to draw the Broncos offside. Play clock down to five, down to four. Someone jumped. Penalty flag comes out. Valencia slides. Gets the first down, and he's hit as he slid. But there is a penalty flag, and it should be offsides against the Broncos. But more concerning was the hit that Valencia took. Offsides is the call by our white hat, Stan Lopen. On this eight-man crew, the umpire is Jason Simpson. Head linesman, Brian Hyatt. Daniel Funk, the line judge. Side judge is Mark Broll. Field judge, Casey Farley. Daniel Zegers, the back judge. And center judge is Armando Espinosa. So offsides the call. Sets up first down and 10 for the Blue Tigers from their own 27-yard line. Valencia flushed out to the left side. Throws off balance and incomplete. Up to the 40-yard line. He was feeling a lot of heat and some pressure from that big four defensive front. Out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Second down and 10. This is still Omar Allen. Valencia claps for the snap. Pocket collapses, flushed out to the left. Penalty flag is out, should be holding and incomplete. We'll see if UCO takes the penalty as it is in the vicinity of holding. <laughs> Penalty has been declined to make it third down and 10. Lincoln is one for four on third down this afternoon. That brings us to a shelter insurance third down. So what does Valencia have in his back pocket here? Back in his left pocket, it's Allen. Everyone looks to the sideline to take the call with 10 seconds on the play clock. They're set to go. Watch for the edge rush here from UCL, although they bring back the linebackers. Zips over the middle, almost incomplete. Rather almost intercepted as it is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Marlo Hughes Jr. Fourth down and out once again will come Cunningham to kick this one away. The freshman's gotten a few kicks away today. This will be punt number three. His longest one he hit for 62 yards, rather for 42 yards. Back to receive for Central Oklahoma, Vargas and Phelps. This kick wobbles to the right side. There's a couple penalty flags down. Might give a chance here for Cunningham to kick it again. Still no rule from the officials as they place the ball at the 48-yard line of the Blue Tigers. But the punting unit is staying out on the field, so if this is running into the kicker, it's five-yard penalty. If it's roughing the kicker, it's 15 and an automatic first down. Running into the kicker is the call. So Cunningham will get a second chance here. And it'll be pushed up five yards. What did 
be the worst thing in the world here to maybe run a fake punt. You're kind of deep in your own territory, but you're down 17-3. to It's homecoming. Let's try to find any little way to gain some momentum. Don't know if we'll see it as Cunningham takes the high snap. That's much better. Oh, what a beauty. A lot of hang time, and it's fielded out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Much better field position for Lincoln defensively this time around. And there's a penalty flag out at the 28-yard line. Are they going to call kick-catch kick, interference is the question. I believe that was Dangerfield. Rather, it was Dangerfield and Williams back to receive on the punt. But Dangerfield was out of bounds by the time he fielded the punt. So I believe it's unsportsmanlike conduct has been called against Lincoln. So 17-3, the Broncos take back over on their own 39-yard line. First down and 10 for Brown. Ball on the right hash. He has three receivers out to the left side. Empty set backfield. And more penalty flags. Flag on the play. One official says timeout. The other says false start, and false start indeed is the call. That'll push them back five yards on a first down and 15. So far, three possessions today for UCO. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown is how it looks. Their longest drive was their last one, 10 plays, 75 yards. Couple steps back on the drop, and Brown is flushed out to his right, and he is drilled out of bounds. And about four or five penalty flags come flying in as Brown took the heat. On the hit from Cameron Hawkins. Don't believe it's enough for targeting. And it's just a late hit out of bounds, so that'll cost the Blue Tigers 15 yards on what would have been a six-yard carry. And second down and long, and instead it's now first down and 10 inside the 50. And out to the LU 45. That's the right call, but Brown made it look worse, I believe, than what the actual original hit was levied. Took a couple somersaults. Got to protect the quarterback, though. Now has a wide-open target, and it's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Jacob Delso. That's his third drop here in the quarter. Was wide open at the 15-yard line. I'm not sure if he needs to put some more stick on the gloves. Or maybe, maybe get an entire new set, but that's the third time he's been targeted. He's not even coming back down to the next set. He appears to be pretty frustrated with himself right now. Brown is under center. Carney in the backfield. He'll turn and give Carney forward to the 40. Drives to the 35, and he'll be short two yards of the first down to bring up third down and two. On the carry. That was Cottrell on the carry. Third down, two to go. Cottrell back in the pistol. Now he joins him in the sidecar to the right side. Hand off Cottrell trying to follow the blockers, and he's met. Behind the line of scrimmage by Teandre Skinner and company. Now it's fourth down and two. It's Central Oklahoma in four down territory. Just 10.06 to go in the half. This has been a long five minutes to start the second half, rather the second quarter. 
Ball's at the 37-yard line. Can Lincoln get a big stop here on fourth down and two? Brown under center. And he's going to pass as he rolls out on play action. Slings it forward. It's picked off at the 15. To the 20. To the 25. And a caravan. To the 30. And still on his feet to the 35. Changes direction on field. Still on his feet. No one can stop him. And eventually he's brought down at the 39-yard line. A big pick and a reception by Eric Brown. And rather, no, it's Joel Talley Jr. On the pick at the 15 and returns it up to the 39-yard line. The Blue Tigers will have first and 10 with some momentum in the crowd with them here in the second quarter, trailing 17-3. So still no Dewan Lomax. This is Omar Allen back with Valencia, sends Allen in motion, flares out to the right side. Here comes the pressure. Allen has the catch at the 35 to the 40, 45, and drug out of bounds at maybe the 45 and a half. Lincoln playing with some conviction after that big interception. And return by Tally Jr. Second down, four to go. Pass was complete for six yards. Second down and four upcoming with the ball on the right hash. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Now make it three and one as a little pitch play. Rolling a carry and a drag from behind as Charles Johnson didn't have much room to work with. No, it's Damon Bell. Damon Bell on the carry. No, he had it right the first time. It was Johnson. The eights and the sixes can be tricky sometimes. 8.30 to play in the half. And Lincoln's going to take a timeout. Or is there a penalty? No penalty flag came out, but the head linesman, Brian Hyatt, rolled his arms and says, now there is a false start. Looks like he had some trouble getting the flag out of his pocket. Sometimes when that happens, officials will throw their hats, but on the penalty, the third of the day for Lincoln. It's now third down and eight yards to convert. Valencia takes the snap, three-step drop, throws out over the middle. This one's long, this one's deep, and it's incomplete. Intended for Christian Robinson. Not sure if it would have been catchable, but he would have had a better chance had he not barreled ahead into the defender. Now will come Cunningham once again. His average length on punts today, 39 yards. Dangerfield and Williams back to receive. Cunningham runs forward. Gets a high kick. A lot of hang time, but not a lot of distance. Now it'll bounce and carry him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. That's where UCO will have the opportunity to take back over. They've scored on all three of their drives today, with the exception of the last one. And that last one, Brown was picked off. Lincoln had a solid return. And Tally Jr. added another interception to his tally. Seven fifty-three remaining in the half. And it's 17-3. Central Oklahoma leads Lincoln. The only score was a 33-yard field goal off the right leg of Javier Moreno. Now 
Now some other scores around the MIAA. 0 and 4 Central Missouri playing host to Northeastern State in Warrensburg today. They're in the third quarter. And Central Missouri leads 21 to 6. Over the Riverhawks who are 1 and 3. Their one win coming against Lincoln was last week. Check on some of the other action here in just a moment as Brown takes the snap, rolls out to his right, checks it down, and it's complete at the 25 to the 30, 35, 40, and at the 40-yard line, he's pushed out of bounds. A lot of yards after carry there on the reception. I believe that was Andrew Carney. So first and 10, ball at the 46 of the Broncos. They're driving from left to right. They'll bunch up a couple receivers, stack them up two by two on the left side, tight end in motion from left to right. Now a wide receiver on the pitch play. Bring it around the right side. Here rolls Kevin Williams, rather Kevion Williams, and Otis, Jackson. and Otis Jackson delivers a much needed tackle to keep him shy of the 50 by two yards. It's now second down and eight. Up in Maryville, Missouri, it's one of the storied rivalries of the MIAA. It's the inner, the third quarter. Missouri Western just a 3-0 lead over Northwest Missouri State. The pass is caught complete. And a drive forward by Dominic Dunn. That's his third reception this afternoon. He's into Blue Tiger territory, and it's first and 10 from the LU 34 for Central Oklahoma. Later tonight, or this afternoon in Topeka, Kansas, Emporia State travels to Washburn. And it looks like they've yet to start the third quarter. They're at halftime in Maryville where it's 3 0. Timeout on the field. We'll take it with them. We'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor. And I'll also pause for station Local identification. Lincoln trailing 17 to 3. This is Blue Tiger play action. Oh, what a dime of a pass to Delso. My, oh, my. Touchdown, Central Oklahoma. Jacob Delso was 0 for 3 on receptions into that catch, and he goes to the pylon. Got beat by Joel Talley, Jr., and now Central Oklahoma has a 20-point advantage with 6.37 remaining in the half. 23-3. That was a tight spiral with beautiful arc from Brown, and he hits Painter. The extra point is up, and it is good. It's 24-3 Central Oklahoma on top of the Blue Tigers with 6 minutes 30 seconds remaining until halftime. That's now three touchdown drives on the day for Central Oklahoma, one field goal. That's all on four possessions for the Blue Tigers. They've had three three and outs. Their first one was three plays, seven yards and a punt. Second drive of the day. Resulted in a field goal, nine plays, 59 yards. Then three plays, eight yards, and a punt on a three and out. Their next drive got them 19 yards. Then they had to punt, and their most recent drive before the four-play, 69-yard drive completed by Brown on his third, I think that second touchdown completion of the afternoon. Oh, well, they had another three and out, three plays, two yards. Trailing by three touchdowns, 24 to three, 637 to play. Cavedo is back to kick this one away from the 35-yard line. Now this time they have Ely back at the goal line to take the kick. It's over his head, out of bounds, and a touchback. To make it first and 10 for the Blue Tigers. Valencia, 8 for 13. He's passed for 70 yards. Samar Break is on the sideline, but he's just helping with the play calls today. (laughs) 
On the left hash, two receivers on the right side. Allen taking the carry and stop with the loss of one in forward progress. That's Allen's fourth carry of the day. Four carries for eight yards. Well, the passing game has looked as good as it ever has for Lincoln. Just getting the run game established that's been a problem as Christian Robinson will flare out at the 30-yard line, make the catch. Got two feet down before being driven out of bounds. And now it's third down and five. Out of the shotgun, Valencia, play action. It is caught in traffic as a big reception for a first down. Just the second third down conversion today for the Blue Tigers. Valencia hands off a high five there to LeCalvin Wilson. That's Wilson's first catch today, and that's now the seventh receiver targeted by Valencia. He's been Throwing to all sides of the field. Just can he find something here for Lincoln with five minutes to go on the half, trailing 24-3 to UCO. Ingley in motion from left to the right side. He's speeding out and trying just to distract the defense as Allen takes the carry, and he's brought down by his ankles. Omar Allen gain of two on the left. And just a gain of two. Well, coming up at the halftime break, if you're joining us on KGLU 88.9 FM, Mike Downey, KGLU, has a special feature on the renaming of Founders Hall on the campus of Lincoln University. You're with us on the MIAA Network. Continue with a special presentation of Division II and NCAA officiating. Here's a penalty flag as Allen jumped out to the right side of the line. It is for a loss of one. There's a little bit of pushing and shoving going on at the line of scrimmage. Penalty flag is back at the 35. Uh, second down. The officials are pushing the ball back by 10 yards, so holding called on the Lincoln offensive line. Fourth penalty of the day on Lincoln for 45 yards of lost ground. Ingley, Robinson, and Johnson lined up to the left side as three receivers split up. Ball in the right hash, empty set backfield. Here's the snap by Valencia. Pocket collapsed. He's going to go down. Second sack of the day for Central Oklahoma, and this time screaming off the line like a red-hot iron is Michael Slater for the Broncos. Delivers a key sack for a loss of three, pushing Lincoln back to the 26-yard line. Make that to the 25-yard line dead even. It is third, and it might be shorter for Lincoln to go from Dwight T. Reed Stadium to the banks of the Big Muddy than it would be for them to convert on this third down. Third down and 22. If you're Valencia here, I think you got to air this one out. He's going to run. He's going to run and has nowhere to go, nowhere to hide, and he loses one yard. Oh, here comes a penalty flag, though. He might have been hit late. That's one way to cut into a third and 22. Is this an unsportsmanlike conduct? 
They've marched off 15 yards. No call from the official. And this will give Lincoln a chance now to convert. That's in sportsmanlike conduct. That's an automatic first down. Now the clock had clock operator with had a first down. It's third down and ten, though. Lincia carries it himself again, takes a couple big hits, and they'll mark him down at the 45-yard line. So, Oh, that was first down and 10. They had it right on the clock on the scoreboard, and on the field they had first down, so now it's second down and 10. That was rather second down and four. That was an automatic first down, so... That's a costly penalty on the Broncos. Tight end wing to the right side. Two receivers split out left. In motion, it's Johnson. Allen takes the carry, and he's tripped over himself. The line of scrimmage. Brings up third down and five. 1.45 to go in the half. The Blue Tigers down 24-3 to Central Oklahoma. It's homecoming. The Lincoln Blue Tigers are in the all-white uniforms, white helmets. The block LU on the side. It's a sharp look. Out of the shotgun, Valencia. Fake to pass. Pump fake. Rolls out to his right. Slings it sidearm. Was trying to find Ingley, but threw it at his feet, and it's... An incomplete pass to stop the clock with a minute 22. And there might be enough time here for Central Oklahoma to do something with the ball. This will be the best field position for Cunningham on any punt today. Back to receive for UCO once again. It's Dangerfield and Williams. No, they made a change. It's Richards in Dangerfield. Richards is lined up on the left hash of the 15. Dangerfield on the right hash of the 15. Fifth punt of the day for Cunningham. Can he get a good leg into it on a fourth down and four? And I believe Lincoln burned its final timeout. No, its second timeout of the half. Lincoln, their second charge up the half. It is indeed fourth down and four. Lincoln has tried one fourth down conversion today. They're 0 for 1. 2 for 8 on third down. 4 for 6 on third down is Central Oklahoma. The yards per play is pretty uneven right now. 8.8 for... The Broncos, 3.5 for Lincoln. UCO with 14 first downs, 5 for LU. And they're separated by about 100 yards through the year. So far, 280 yards of total offense. For the Broncos and 105 for Lincoln. Here's Cunningham once again to give it a try. Boots it with pressure. Got a big line drive kick. Fielded at the 11-yard line by Richards. And he's going to change direction on the field and scamper out of bounds at the 31. And rather, that's Dangerfield on the return. He could have stuck in there for a few more yards if he really wanted to, but wanted to play it safe. After all, that last drive put together by the Broncos capped off on First and ten at the, the longest pass of the afternoon for Brown. 45-yard completion. Rather, 33-yard completion to Delso. Brown with the pocket. Well, completely collapsing. He's driving through traffic across the 50 and down to the LU 45. The clock will stop as the chain gang moves everything up. It's 106 to go in the half. The Broncos on top, 24 to 3 over the Blue Tigers.
out of the shotgun. Brown slings his sidearm complete to Dangerfield, spins around at the 40 at the 35. And driven down by Teandre Skinner at the 33 on the hurry up offense. Rather, it was not Dangerfield on the reception, but Terrell Davis. First catch for Davis on the afternoon. Hand off Carney, and he's met in the backfield. Tackled for a loss, loss of five. Kevin Carroll, Kevin Carroll said not this time, and that'll timeout. force Central Oklahoma to burn their final timeout. 24-3, 40 seconds to go. Broncos on top, and we'll take the timeout with them. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. This is Lincoln Blue Tiger football. The timeout. As they have 40 seconds to work with here and about 38 yards to cover. Second down. And we'll call it 14. As Kevin Carroll got the stop on Kemper. Loss of about four. And here we go back to action. Brown flushed out to his right. Here come the dogs. Throws off balance, downfield, and pass interference will be called seven out of eight times against Lincoln when you commit pass interference like that inside the five-yard line. Pass interference. Pass was intended, I believe, for Kemper. Automatic first down. 15 yards from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Central Oklahoma with 33 seconds has it first and 10 to the LU 23. Brown evades a tackle and a sack. He's going to keep it to the 20-yard line. He's pushed out of bounds at the 15 to preserve 26 seconds on the clock. They have a good field goal kicker, so... As long as you don't turn it over, this should at least be three points for the Broncos. Brown with eyes downfield takes the snap. Fires into traffic. Skinner helps bring down Delso, but he's inside the five. No timeouts left, though, here for Central Oklahoma. They're quickly back to the line, and Brown is going to take the snap and clock the ball. But there is a flag on the field. Was Lincoln offsides? Side, number 55. Lined up in the neutral zone. Half the distance to the goal. First down. So half the distance to the goal. The penalty does stop the clock, so I wonder if they're going to add any more time on the clock. There should be a couple seconds at least, you'd think, for Central Oklahoma, but unless the officials say he put X amount of time back, well, not going to do it. Here's Brown. Trying to air it out to the end zone. Leaping catch is hauled in. And he keeps completion control down to the ground. Touchdown Central Oklahoma with 11 seconds to go in the half. They extend the lead 30-3, to pinning the PAT as it's hauled in by Nasir Kemper. Central Oklahoma put it on a show here in the first half. The extra point by Cavedo is forthcoming. Drives it, drills it to make it 31 to three with 11 seconds to go in the half. And Lincoln down big. Four touchdowns separate the Blue Tigers and Broncos. On what has been a Disappointing first half on homecoming. The growing pains are still live and well here with this team.
But Jermaine Gales with the tough task ahead of him. Has his eyes forward, has the ability to tune out the noise and just focus on player development right now. Probably is one of the most difficult coaching positions in all of Division II. But there's baby steps each week. We'll see what they are here in the second half. He's been making good second half adjustments so far. See if they can find the silver lining here. Here's Ingley taking the kickoff at the 20. Turns the corner at the 25. Barrels over a man at the 28. Ingley said, I'm getting my money's worth this time. As the last time he wanted to make the return, well, there was a fair catch called inside the 15. Now Valencia has taken all the snaps here in the first half, takes a knee, and that is how it comes to a close. 31-3, Central Oklahoma leads by 28 on homecoming. They head to the locker room, the Blue Tigers head to the link, and we head to break as we appreciate you sticking around with us here on KGLU, 88.9 FM, Jefferson City, and on the MIAA Network. We'll have Ken Downey coming up here in just a moment. And stay tuned on the MIAA Network for the special presentation. For right now, though, we'll see you at the start of the second half with LU down by 28. And we'll run from right to left. Big first half for Brown. Quarterback for the Broncos with more than 200 passing yards. Two touchdowns. And can Lincoln's defense come up with a big stop here early, get him back on the right track? Cunningham's ready. Are you ready? It's the second half of homecoming at Dwight T. Reed Stadium. Brought out to the 15, to the 20, 25, and a big skip and a jump down to the 30-yard line. Almost Kobe Stevens on the return. Looked like Kobe Stevens was trying to run the high jump for Lincoln track. As he went flying forward to the 30-yard line. They'll place the ball at the right hash. Brown. Is going to remain out there at quarterback. And it's an empty set backfield. Trips receivers split out to the left side. Wow, make it four receivers split out to the left side. Lincoln shows four on the line. Here comes the pressure. Quick pass. Delso taken at the 30 and curls around as he knifes forward to the 33-yard line. And stopped by the Blue Tigers. Woodens Pierre Lewis. Gain of four on the play brings up second down, six to go. Second and six, 14.30 to go in the third quarter. First possession for Central Oklahoma out of the break. Here's the snap and a roll around to the right side. Big yard carry for Cottrell. Gets the first down in about 10 or 15 more. He's up to midfield. Central Oklahoma moves the sticks once again. First and ten at the 47-yard line. Here's Brown with plenty of time. He's going for all the money downfield. Delso catches at the 10 to the 5 to the house. Touchdown Central Oklahoma. A 53-yard strike as Delso hauls in his second touchdown reception of the afternoon. Delso just a sophomore, but he's been the favorite target. Of the junior quarterback at six foot five, two hundred twenty pounders, Stephen Brown. Mm. 
Now Cavedo back for the extra point. A little high on the snap. Doesn't matter. Drills it. And it's 38 to 3 with 13.48 to go in the third quarter. My oh my, what a big drive. 18 first downs now on the day for the Broncos. And they clear over 70 yards in under three plays on a big adjustment. No, not a big adjustment made out of the halftime break, but certainly making it easier. That was their fewest number of plays for almost the most number of yards on any drive today. They've had field position back at the 25 as well as the 31, the 38, and the 43. They made that one look easy. I believe as they started that one from 71 yards out. So 38-3, to 13-48 to go. The Blue Tigers will return this one from left to right. It's Tavian Miller lined up on the far hash, on the near hash. It's Ely. High end of a end kick. Ely taking a read on it out of the blue sky. He's going to bring this one out. Oh, my. To the 10, to the 15. Finds a seam at the 20. Stays on his feet and inbounds to the 25. And the officials say he stepped on the wide white chalk at the 26. So considering how late and how long it took him to return that kick, it's amazing he got back out to the 26. So a decent return. And out of the huddle, it is Valencia. So no Zamar break. He's healthy. Just a game-time decision by Coach Gales to work with Valencia. Hands off to Allen, trying to cut up field to the right side. Turn the corner up to the 30-yard line where he's down, and it's second down and seven upcoming. 38-3, Broncos score on their first possession of the second half. And the clock continues to roll with 13-11 to play. Empty set backfield, four-man rush. Pass is caught. Maybe ahead of the first down yards. We'll see where it's spotted on the completion to Damon Bell. That's enough to move the chains. Just the sixth first down of the day for Lincoln. And that should get Valencia close to 100 yards passing on the day. Now the Blue Tigers empty set backfield. Three receivers out to the left, two to the right side. Valencia calls Omar Allen in motion, <laughs> in motion, and he rolls out to the left side. Oh my, it's been that kind of day, hasn't it? Second down and 11. Juan Lomax is still on the sideline, but his helmet is off, so I'm not sure if we're going to see him the rest of the game. Came out on the first drive for Lincoln, and there is a penalty flag. Should be off sides against Central Oklahoma, but it won't matter as they stop Allen in the backfield. They're going to get a false start on Trayvon Craig. And a free five yards. So second 11 turns into second down and six. Lincoln up to their own 42. Now Lomax is back in there at wide receiver. They're going to put him in the slot. See what the former Boonville Pirate can do. Valencia drops back, flushed out of the pocket. 
Fires ahead. It's caught by Miller at the 50-yard line and a first down. So Valencia took a big hit in the pocket, but it works out, and that's the second first down of this drive for Lincoln on their first possession of quarter number three. That will put Valencia over 100 yards passing on the game. Lomax and Ely line up to the left side. On the near side, it's Miller and Johnson. We got Ingley in the slot. Trips receivers to the right. Ball on the right hash. Valencia takes the carry following the blockers. Brought down from behind. He lost his helmet. He'll have to come out for a play. And this will be an opportunity for Zamar Brink to enter with his team trailing 38-3 and 11.07 to go in the third. Well, we know Brake has a cannon of an arm. He passed for over 400 yards in a game last season against Northeastern State. That was a heartbreaker in overtime for Lincoln. Lost by a point. Extra tight end wing to the left side. It's Angley. He'll motion to the right. Ball on the right hash. Brake hands off. And into a sea of navy blue and gold. Lomax is stopped short of the line, and Brake is going to come back out. So that brings up a shelter insurance third down. Learning experience here for Brake. Just because you go into the game for one play, as Valencia lost his helmet, doesn't mean you're going to get an opportunity to pass. Now it's third down and eight to go. It's Valencia on play action, flushed out to his right. He's going to throw it. Incomplete, now he's hit from behind late. A little surprising there that a late hit was not called against UCO. That was Connor Johnson who pushed Valencia almost a, what felt like a full second after he let the ball go. Uh, Valencia's back out for this fourth down. Lincoln is 0 for 1 on the day in fourth down conversions. Seventh play of the drive. They've gone for 25 yards. Trips receivers to the left. Valencia with heat is flung around and sacked for a loss of five. And a turnover on downs gives it back to UCO inside Lincoln territory. They'll have the ball at the 47. Third sack of the day allowed by the Blue Tiger offensive line. Now Central Oklahoma has gone to the second string. Now it's Peyton Thompson in at quarterback. Takes the snap on play action. Fires over the middle. It's caught. Oh, my. Here goes Ridgeway. Out to the corner, finding the edge, and out to the 25-yard line where he's pushed on a big 20-yard completion the first of the day for the backup quarterback, Peyton Thompson, getting some key minutes here, and the Broncos are running hurry up. New running back into the game is Jace Gardner. He becomes the sixth running back as they go to the I formation. Gardner drops the eye, or rather dots the eye, and sheds a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Here comes a penalty flag in. Well from behind. It could be a chop block against Central Oklahoma. Someone's helmet came off. Could be a face mask called, and that's Gardner who lost his helmet, so... I believe the call was a face mask. So Gardner, even though he lost his helmet, will not have to come out for a play. Nine thirty-five to go here in quarter number three. Central Oklahoma on top, thirty-eight to three, and they're inside the red zone. They're perfect today, five for five when entering inside the twenty. I formation, Gardner takes the handoff, fighting for yards, gets to the second level and is stopped at the six yard line. Elvis Bridgman on the stop for Lincoln. 
That'll make it second down and four. So back on the shotgun set, option play. Gardner has room. Can he follow the blockers as he breaks the plane and scores? Touchdown, Central Oklahoma. At the 8.47 mark, they continue to pile on. Now it's 44-3. to That's their third rushing touchdown of the game. And Tally comes up. Injured's not the right word, but he's jogging off to the sideline gingerly. There's UCO back for the extra point. It's Quevedo. You get this one through. The snap was low and bobbled, but the laces pointed forward and. No problem for Cavedo. It's now 45 to 3. UCO on top of Lincoln with 8.47 remaining in the third quarter. And we'll take a break here for 30 seconds. This is Lincoln Blue Tiger football. Welcome back to a sunny Jefferson City, Missouri. James Stanley with you on the call on homecoming. The Blue Tigers hosting Central Oklahoma. They trail 45 to 3 to the Broncos. UCO is right now trying to make this look easy. As they lead it big. 45-3. Brown well, more than likely is out for the rest of the game as they bring in the second string. He passed for 273 yards today. This kickoff high end over end will be taken by Ely. Five feet deep into the end zone. He's going for it. The five-yard line changes direction of field to the 15 to the 20 and stopped a yard shy of the 25. Where Lincoln will set up shop. There's a penalty flag, though, back at midfield. They're going to call holding against the Blue Tigers. That might... Take away half the distance of the goal. Well, the last player to pass for 250 yards for Central Oklahoma came on November 6, 2020 when Keats Calhoun passed for 301 yards against Nebraska Kearney. Zamar break, taking the snap and rolls around to the left side. Was trying to find someone to pass to on first and ten. Now it's second down and ten with the ball at the 14-yard line following the penalty. Central Oklahoma has played Pretty clean today. They did turn the ball over, something they did not do last week as they handed off on a jet sweep. And Kevin Jacobs rolls around to the right side. There is a penalty flag on the field at the 14. Jacobs, as he just talked to the official, looked frustrated, so I'm assuming this is against Lincoln. It was second down and 10 with 8.02 to go in the third. 
45 to 3, Central Oklahoma on top. And they're going to back up Lincoln half the distance to the goal. I believe holding is the call. So now we'll be we seeing Zamar break. Trying to air this one out. Allen joins him in the backfield. Right to the sidecar, four-man front. Just one in the box for Central Oklahoma. Handoff, Allen. Couldn't find a seam. Pushes the pile up to the 10-yard line. That'll make it third down and 15. They got to get the ball up to the 24-yard line Omar Allen. if they want to move the sticks. That brings us to a shelter insurance third down. Two receivers split on right, extra tight end wing to the right side. Break motions Allen into his left pocket. Here comes the pocket, stays on his feet, evades one tackle and tried to stay upright, but he's sacked once more. Or that's the first time he's been sacked. It's another sack allowed by the Lincoln offensive line, and he's dropped for a loss of three. It's fourth down and a long way to go. And I think the only option here is to send out Michael Cunningham to kick it away. This will be the sixth punt of the day for Michael Cunningham. But there is a Blue Tiger down at the goal line. The training staff has come out to take a look. Jermaine Giels is now walking his way out. As they tend to the injured Blue Tiger. Right at the goal line on the far end zone. And that is Ingley, who is very tenderly putting weight on his right leg. That's a big loss for Lincoln. If he is brought out as the tight end. The backup is Jalen Gade. Makes you wonder if Ingley just twisted his ankle or exactly what happened, but Cunningham is out to kick this one. Rather punt this one away from his own end zone and maybe has three feet between his heels and the back line. It's an end over end swabbly kick that bounces and comes to a stop at the Lincoln 48 yard line. So decent starting field position. For Central Oklahoma, it will be their best starting field position of the day. First and ten for the Broncos. Rolling from right to left across your radio dial and on the LU 48-yard line. Last time out for Central Oklahoma, four plays, 47 yards. Led by the sophomore quarterback. Peyton Thompson. Thompson motions. Man from right to left side of the line. Drops back to pass on three steps. An absolute acrobatic catch made out of bounds. Oh, my. Madison Ridgeway on the reception. He clearly came down with it. He must have just barely dragged one of his toes in bounds. as he leapt and made an absolute acrobatic play. They'll hand off on misdirection. Thompson 
gives to Kevion Williams. Charges around the left side. Ran about 25 yards just to gain three, but now it's third down and two from the Lincoln 40. 5.56 to go. Central Oklahoma leading on homecoming for Lincoln, 45-3. to three. Gardner dots the eye on a hard snap count. I think Lincoln jumped. With the Blue Tigers penalty, that'll be their 10th of the game. They've lost nine. Seven yards. Empty set backfield for Thompson. See surveys are on the right side. Oh, and he's blindsided. Cody Bagby took him down for a loss of six. He snuck right around the corner of the offensive line, and he'll pick up his first sack of the afternoon. Even though Thompson dropped almost 10 yards back to make a second down at 17, goes under center. And ran into Gardner as he throws and he's hit and completes it out to the flat. It's Dominique Dunn on the reception. For a gain of maybe six or seven, will bring up third down and about 11 yards. That could have been a huge mistake committed by the sophomore quarterback as he ran back into Jace Gardner. Now he drops back to pass as he rolls around the right side and fires forward. Is it caught? It's incomplete. His intended target was JV on Dangerfield. Lincoln wanted holding called, I believe. Are they sending out the punt unit or the field goal unit? It's the field goal unit, but the Blue Tigers are going to have Charles Johnson. Line up deep. The ball spotted at the 43. This is a 53-yard field goal attempt. Off the leg of Nicky Cavedo. Here he sends it back. It has the distance. Can it go? Is it wide? And it's no good as it goes wide to the left. That would have been an NFL caliber field goal had Cavedo been able to will it in, but like a fine Seiko watch, you got to have everything lined up correctly as that field goal attempt from 53 yards had the distance but was unable to hit its mark. So Lincoln will take back over, first and 10 from the 36-yard line, 4.22 to play in the third. It's 45-3, Central Oklahoma. Can Zamar break? Get the Blue Tigers on the board with a touchdown. The only score today came off the right foot of Javier Moreno. He drilled from 33 yards out. Break takes the snap, play action, rolls to his right. Oh, has a wide open Christian Robinson as he makes the catch at the 42. Of UCO, and the Blue Tigers are cooking with gas here on a 20-yard completion. That'll be Robinson's second catch. His first went for five off the hands of Valencia. First completion for Break. Now 
After the play call, two by two on the wide receivers, ball on the right hash, shotgun set, Bray claps, takes the snap, he'll drop back one step, two steps, tries to get out of a tackle, and he is sacked once again for a loss of two. It's second down and 12 upcoming. From the Blue Tiger, rather the UCO 44 yard line. Brings up second and 12. Now, Brake is a dangerous quarterback. If you're able to get him with some pressure, I mean, he does have legs. He's got great ability to run. But he has such great vision downfield, and if he can get a wide receiver open on a missed assignment, do a lot of damage. Flushed out to the right, throws it, incomplete, almost intercepted. I believe that Central Oklahoma's Connor Johnson got his hands on it. Brake does avoid the sack, but now it's third down and 12. And the Blue Tigers are converting less than 20% today on third downs. Three minutes, seven seconds to go in quarter number three. Central Oklahoma 45, LU3. And Jermaine Gills wants a timeout. Well, we'll take the timeout with him as he talks things over. We'll see you in 30 seconds on KJLU 88.9 FM Jefferson City and the MIAA Network. Partner of Lincoln University. 45 to 3, the Blue Tigers trailing Central Oklahoma with 3.07 to go in quarter number 3. James Stanley on the call. We're glad to have you here with us on this homecoming afternoon. It's a fun parade this morning in the 50s. The temperatures climbed up to the mid 70s. Not a cloud in the sky and a slight breeze. blowing with us from right to left. Four receivers set, two to the right, two to the left. Samar break on third down and 12. Airs it out really high, and like John Elway put too much mustard on it. In and out of the hands of Christian Robinson. He needed an extra foot and a half with a leap in the air in order to pull that one down. I think they're going to leave him out there on the field. Why not give him a chance? That last drive by Central Oklahoma kind of sputtered and stalled. And they went for the 53-yard NFL range field goal attempt for Cavedo. Would have been one of the longest of his career, and he made it. There have been some kickers from the, N the MIAA to make it all the way to the NFL. Here comes a penalty flag. It's going to be free play as it's way overthrown. The intended target, Charles Johnson. And it should be offsides called on Central Oklahoma. So fourth and 12 will become fourth and seven. A Greg Zerline kicked for Missouri Western. An illustrious NFL career. One point was with the Dallas Cowboys. MIAA has really strived to be one of the best Division II conferences for football, and that's Case in point, it was not going to be an easy task for Lincoln when they made the return to the MIAA out of the GLVC a couple, three years ago. As 
as Robinson will make the completion on fourth down and seven, but he's short of the first down, and Lincoln turns it over at the Bronco 34-yard line. One of the innovations that they've made in the MIAA this year is becoming the first Division II conference to institute instant replay. Now, we haven't seen it yet today. We saw it a couple times in the season opener, or the home opener. But not yet today. It was interesting scene. Division two coaches with the challenge flag. But back comes Robinson. It's a pitch play to the right side, and the running back lost the ball as they go deep into the depth chart. Tavius McDonald fell on it, and rather know that's Peyton Scott. He took the pitch play and lost. for about a loss of six, maybe five, with 2.35 to go in the third. And the Blue Tigers trailing 45-3. to three. Another fumble on the ground. This time Lincoln recovers as the snap was low. Thompson was under center, and Lincoln recovers at the 27-yard line. We didn't see who made the recovery, but regardless, the Blue Tigers will head back out on the field. Best field position of the day, first and 10 from the Bronco 28. We'll go with the shotgun set. Allen in the left pocket, a break. Hard snap count, looks to the near sideline, getting the play call. He'll have Miller, Johnson, and Bell lined up on the right side of the line. Jermaine Gales, though, will burn his second time out of the half. He'll have one remaining with 2.20 to go in the third, trailing 45 to 3 on homecoming. Now let's take a look around the MIAA. The Blue Tigers and Broncos, not the only game going on. Around the conference, Northwest Missouri State has scored 16 on answered in Maryville. At a halftime, they trailed 3-0 into the halftime break against Missouri Western. They had a bad taste in their mouth after getting upset by Central Oklahoma last week. But 16-3 the score with 3.59 to go in Maryville. Emporia State and Washburn have kicked off. Emporia State has an early 7-0 lead over the Ichabods in Topeka. And then this game has gone final from Warrensburg. Central Missouri takes care of business against Northeastern, 35-13. Two receivers out to the left on the right side. Break. Is still on his feet. Now he's sacked. The offensive line has surrendered a few of those today. And he's dropped for a loss of seven or eight. To make it second down and 18. Uh, 
Handoff goes to LaMarco Yates. Charges forward to the 34. And that'll make it third and 16. Blue Tigers 2 of 11 on third down today. They need to get inside the 18 to convert. Ball at the 36. Break. Looks long. Airs it out. It's caught by Robinson on the route. He hauls it in and is tackled by Amante Davis. It's like his mouth guard came flying out on the sideline and was trying to pick it up. Said, hey, I just want my mouth guard. Fourth and seven at the was kind of hunting through the trees and I think the Blue Tigers took very kindly to it. Fourth down and seven, they're going to go for With 37 seconds to go in the fourth. Here's Brink, dropping back, has it incomplete. For Johnson, just led him by a couple feet, and there's a Blue Tiger injured down. It's the left guard, Ali Andro Flores. Rather, that's the left tackle rolling around at the 32-yard line. Six foot seven, 300 town, 310 pound freshman. See if he's able to get up on his own. Just to appears to be all right. He's putting weight on. His right foot just a little gingerly, but he's able to walk off. So 29 seconds to go in the third. UCO leads Lincoln 45-3. to three. Here in Jefferson City. Blue Tigers already sending the defense back out. They're ready to roll. What will Central Oklahoma have dialed in? And he can run one or two more plays before the end of the third quarter. First and ten from the 25. Thompson with Gardner. Three receivers split on right side. Gardner takes the pitch play to the 20-yard line to the 30 and up to the 35. Barrels forward. Knocks down the pins and it's now first and 10 to the 37. And that was Scott on the carry. Nine different Players have rushed the ball today for UCO. Clock is running down to six seconds to five. Will they get one more snap off before the end of the quarter? And it appears so. With milliseconds on the clock, Thompson rolls around to the right side. He has green pastures ahead of him. And runs out of bounds to the 41-yard line on the last play of quarter number three as we head to a 60-second break from Jefferson City. 45 for UCO, three for Lincoln, and we'll be back with first and 10 from the 42 on KGLU 80.9 FM Jefferson City and the MIAA Network. See you in 60 seconds.
of the four. Quarter, Zamar breaks so far three for six in the second half for 36 yards. Valencia, unless they put him back out there, is going to finish one yard shy of 100. 12 for 19 for 99, and in the fourth quarter, it'll be Central Oklahoma starting out first and 10 from the LU 42. They're up 45 to three. Thompson under center. Scott takes the handoff, the 40 yard line to the 35. Continues to roll and run up to the 25-yard line. Looks like he was going to be down at the 35, and he carried the pile with him. Lost his helmet on the way, but it's another Bronco first down. That's their 26th of the afternoon. First and 10. First and 10 to 24. At the 24. Empty set backfield, trips receivers to the right side, handoff, rather snap. Is back, and it's completed around the right corner, rolling upfield. Lower the shoulder, lower the boom as Johnny Bizzle the fourth. He made head to head contact with Otis Jackson. He'll have to come out for a play as the helmet came off. Gardner in the sidecar. Now he motions out wide to the right side and takes the catch at the 20-yard line. Got a block at the 20 to the 15 to the 10. And first down number 27 for Central Oklahoma today. 13.56 to go. Here in the fourth, the Broncos... They score another touchdown. We'll go over the half century mark. Shotgun set. It's a handoff for Gardner. Oh, man, he's brought down behind the line. Excellent coverage by Marky Mallory. Drops him for a loss of two. He's back to the 12-yard line, so now second down and goal from the 12. They'll go back with Scott. To the right side of the shotgun set. Play action, Thompson fires forward. It is caught. The ball hit the turf, though, and they're saying Dominique Dunn made a clean catch, so spot a down at the seven-yard line to make it third down and goal from the seven with 12.49 to go. Third and goal with the seven-yard line. Lincoln 3, Central Oklahoma 45. Kind of a long day on homecoming here. All across mid-Missouri. As Thompson fires into the end zone, it's incomplete off the hands of Mallory for Lincoln, and now fourth down and goal to go from the seven. Are they going to go 
for it here on fourth down and seven, and a timeout called by the Broncos. We would like to take a moment to I'll take the timeout with them. We'll step aside for 30 seconds. This is Lincoln Blue Tiger football. Blue Tigers trailing 45 to 3, 12 24 to go. Against Central Oklahoma. As it is fourth down and goal from the seven yard line. The offense is going to stay out on the field. This will be Scott and Thompson in the backfield. Central Oklahoma is yet to convert on a fourth down today. High snap. Thompson rolls out to his left. Runs out of options. Fires in zone. Was it caught? It's incomplete as he fired into the turf. The pressure was on. The Blue Tigers applied some great defensive pressure there. From Samuel Aminatwane. I believe Blake Oakley. I'll take over on downs inside the seven yard line. And it's some our break. Back out on the field. LaMarco Yates joins him at running back. Two receivers split out left and the right. Sides. Yates went to the pistol, now back to shotgun. Now he goes back to shotgun on the right. Hip of break and tries to turn the corner on the left side and he's driven backwards. Clock is rolling, 12.09 to play. The Blue Tigers trailing 45-3 to to Central Oklahoma. As they make a goal line stand, take back over. They haven't scored since their second possession of the game, all the way back in the first quarter on a field goal from Javier Moreno. Break in the shotgun. In the end zone, rolls to his right and throws it incomplete. To avoid the sack and the safety, he's been sacked four times already and he's played just the second half. And now it's third down. And 11. Make it 12. Yates is still back there with him. Miller and Ely out to the near side. And on the far side, they'll work with Johnson. And Bell. Break. Threads the needle, passes completed the 20 yard line to Ely on the flare route, and they'll mark him up at the 22 as he converts on third down and 11. Moves the sticks here for Lincoln with 11.28 to play. In quarter number three.
Well, up next with the Blue Tigers, they head down to Joplin next Saturday to take on Missouri Southern. And they're back at home on the 15th versus Pittsburgh State. It's like it's been a few years since the Gorillas have made the trip to Jeff City. And they have Nebraska Kearney at home. They're at Central Missouri on the 29th of October and their final home game on Senior Day will be against Emporia State on November 5th. What a way to bring in October, though. As we enter second down and 10. Shotgun set, it's Yates in the backfield. Brink takes the snap, looks right, fires, incomplete for Bell. Or maybe it's Johnson, the intended target. Regardless, it's third down and 10. Broncos 45, Blue Tigers 3, 10 26 to go. And a timeout called. Believe by the Broncos. It's their second charge timeout of the half and We'll keep it here. 45 to 3, Lincoln trailing, and you just look at the drive charts here. With the exception of two drives, Central Oklahoma has, rather, three drives. Central Oklahoma has scored. Now make that four. So they've missed a field goal. They've Fumbled it, they turn it over on down. So they throw in an interception. But the efficiency under the starting quarterback, Brown, was unbelievable. First drive, touchdown, second. Drive, field goal, third drive, touchdown. Fourth drive interception, fifth drive touchdown, sixth drive touchdown. Lincoln back to business here, third down and ten. Looks like that was an official timeout as Brake surveys the field. Fires and completes it to the 30, make that 25-yard line. We'll say down in bounds. The clock will roll. It's now four. Down and seven, make it six or seven. And here comes Michael Cunningham once again to punt. Seventh punt for Cunningham today. Back. To receive for the Broncos, it's Richards and Dangerfield. A lot of hang time. As Richards is nailed as he makes the catch. Excellent coverage there. For 
from Ely. And he's pinned at the 30-yard line. 9.35 to go. Broncos 45, Blue Tigers 3. Well, they just announced homecoming for next year. So if you want to book it, mark it down in your calendar, October 7th, 2023. I don't believe an opponent has been announced yet. Last couple three years, it's been Northeastern State on that lines up properly. We'll see who they work with. First down and ten upcoming. Here for the Broncos. They're up 45 to three here in quarter number four. Thompson six of nine for 49 yards through the air. The leading rusher, however, today was Brown. He carried the ball 46 yards. He was responsible for more than 300 yards of offense, 273 through the air. Then the 46 on the ground. They'll continue to work with Peyton Thompson in at quarterback. Gardner joins him in the pistol. Toss play. Gardner to the left side of the line. Marches forward for a game of Five. It's now second down and five from the Bronco 35. Thompson goes under center. Gardner dots the eye. They send Scott in motion. Now a rollout, and Cody Bagby read the play like a book as he sacks Thompson down at the 25-yard line. They'll mark him down at the 24, so a loss of four. Both sides giving up a lot of sacks. Once again, find the positives to build off of here for Lincoln. Four-man front for the Blue Tigers, third down and 14. And off for Gardner, and he's unable to find more than seven yards. This will bring up fourth down from the Bronco 32 with 8.19 to play. UCO on top, 
Looked like some miscommunication here by the Broncos. They had it. Their offense out for fourth down. Now the punt unit comes out with five on the play. Clock down to four, down to three, down to two. Lincoln wasn't ready for it either. And the Broncos will burn their second time out of the half. Seven forty-three to go. And with this timeout on the field. Let's see if some more break. Lincoln takes back over and can piece something together here. Get on the board somehow. They've scored a touchdown in every game this year with the exception of their loss to Washburn week one, which was a 45-3 loss. They put up 20 against Northwest Missouri State. Lost 51-14 to Fort Hayes State last week, or rather two weeks ago. Under the lights here at YT Reed Stadium, and last week fell 38-10. Excellent punt delivered here. I believe the first of the day for Central Oak. Oklahoma. Was indeed their first punt. From David Vargas. Gets it down to the Blue Tiger 30 yard line. With 7.33 to play. And Lincoln down by 42. Jermaine Gale's taking a few moments here to talk things over with his squad. Like he's going to stick with Zamar Brake. Valencia is on the sideline helping with the play calls. His helmet is off. And out comes the offense. First and 10 from the 30. Break operating out of the shotgun. He'll have three receivers bunched up on the jumbo set to the right side. Allen takes the handoff, rolls around, and is dropped for a loss of one. Rather, that was not Allen on the carry, but DeWan Lomax. Down, 
So Lomux out of the shotgun. Brink takes the low snap, rolls to his right. Is he going to throw it? No, he's going to run. And around the sideline he goes to Lamar on the carry. rush forward, I believe, for a gain of seven to make it third down. And a about four. Clock continuing to run with six and a half to go. Can Lincoln convert? Call it third and three. They're three of 14 on third down today. Here comes the blitz. Break feeling the pressure. Oh, fires a complete to Johnson. Gets the first down and about three more, but there's a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. Central Oklahoma did bring a little extra heat there on the blitz. I think they're going to say one of them... Jumped off sides. But it won't matter because Jermaine Gills declines the penalty. 6.04 to play. Central Oklahoma about to improve to 3-2 and two on the season as they started out One and two. And Brink sells the fake handoff. And spins forward to the 47 yard line. Lamar Brake on the carry. Gain of four on the play. Brings up second down. Six to go. Second and six. The Blue Tigers are going to set their sights on next week as they head down to Joplin to take on Mo Souther. On the handoff, incomplete, rather on the With the play action. Pass was incomplete, intended for Miller. Incomplete pass attempt brings us to a filter insurance, third down. It's third down. And about six. Break out of the shotgun. Play action. Rolls to. Was right being chased 
Throws off balance, incomplete. In and out of the hands of Miller. Now it's fourth down and six. Well, the punt team has come in. Now Michael Cunningham for the eighth time. Thank you for Central. Oklahoma here. You just need to get a couple first downs and fire up the bus and get ready to head back to Edmond. Now the kick is high, but it doesn't go very far. Takes a Blue Tiger. Bounce, and bounce helps. Out of bounds at the 18. First and ten Blue Tiger fans. Blue Tiger football host. for Central Oklahoma. The next time you come out here and watch the Blue Tigers at home again, be on October 15th against Pittsburgh State. Join us here on KJLU 88.9 FM Jefferson City as well as on the MIAA network. We'll have all the calls, all the action. We're going to go a third quarterback deep with J.D. Geneva. Pitching the ball off for Scott. Maybe gains one up to the 19 around the right side. Rather, that was Gardner on the carry. Gardner on the carry, gain of one on the play, brings up second down, nine. So second to nine, four and a half to go. Lincoln will still be in the hunt for its first win in the MIAA. Since 2019. Pitch on the carry for Gardner. Ball loses maybe a yard or two to make it third down and ten. Back to square one. Now the fifth meeting between Central Oklahoma and Lincoln is going to continue to shine in the favor of the Broncos as this pass is caught 
And a first down plus some lots of yards after the carry. On the check down call, they get it up to Dominique Dunn. Has a fresh set of downs here up to the 36. Three and a half to go, but the first meeting was in 2012. The Blue Tigers lost 56-25. And the last meeting. was last year Lincoln in Edmond fell 69 to 28 to the Broncos I believe this is the fewest number of points scored by Lincoln in the series with this sidearm sling from Geneva Gets it up there for a first down at midfield. And there is an injured Blue Tiger at the 47-yard line. Julian Jackson Linkhart, and he got the wind knocked out of him. He's walking off to the sideline, and he's pretty frustrated right now. Geneva hands off, bouncing around. The left side for Gardner. Gets the first down as he's run out of bounds. Three first downs on the drive now. for Central Oklahoma. The clock will stop with two. Thirty-six. They move the chains. Three receivers split out right side. The Blue Tigers are able to stop him here on the run. So they hand off to Gardner once more. And this time he's stopped. Penalty flag flies out. And it's Aaron Akello on the tackle for loss. They might get him for a face mask or maybe a horse collar tackle. Regardless on the penalty, it'll put Lincoln over 100 yards, surrendered on penalties in the game. And Looks like they're marching off 10 yards, so face mask, I believe, is the most likely culprit.
Well, the Blue Tigers have yet to give up a score here in quarter number four. At least get the shutout. Final 15 minutes. Let's again find the little positives, little silver linings as Gardner. Drives around the right side inside the red zone and that will set up a second down and we'll call it four at the 16. 145, the clock is continuing to roll. And on a homecoming Saturday, Blue Tigers are going to fall to Central Oklahoma. The Broncos are in the victory formation. Just two more snaps, and this one will go to the books. Well, we want to thank you for joining us this afternoon on KGLU 88.9 FM Jefferson City and on the MIAA network. I want to thank Dan Carr, the sports information director here at Lincoln University, as well as Kevin Wilson, our fearless leader and athletic director. And Not forget our two producers on the MIAA Network, Jared Steinbeck, and on KJLU. Eighty-eight point nine FM, Jefferson City, as always. Dan Turner, working with Dan for a few years now, and. We were persistent, <laughs> to say the least, getting this broadcast off the ground this afternoon. But there's the final knee, and that'll do it. Your final scores. Central Oklahoma comes driving into Jeff City, and they win it 45-3 to on homecoming. And the Blue Tigers fall to 0-5 next week. They will be at Missouri Southern, and then they're back at home on the 15th against Pittsburgh State. But for all of us here at Lincoln University, for our... Blue Tiger Nation, this is James Stanley signing off. We'll see you next time on KGLU 88.9 FM, Jefferson City. Have a blessed homecoming, everybody.